Hello.
this morning. Good morning. Looking Good morning. very lovely. See some faces that I haven't seen in a while. Very happy for that. See some new faces. Very happy for that. And welcome to our Zoom online people who are here. We're always glad for that. We'd like to see you in person whenever, but if not, we're thankful that you're here as well. I just want to take one little second. I want to read something this morning from our <coughs> Release and Renew 2022 um, Unity's Lent book. And for Sunday, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I was trying to get that done before I left, and I was rushing, and I was reading. It was kind of long, and I was like, I don't even know what this is saying. And then I got to the end, and I was really glad that I read it because it says, guidance only matters if we are willing to trust it and go where it leads us. Know this, love is always listening to us and for us. Be willing to listen with your whole being and know that you are always divinely guided in every moment. And that was such a nugget for me and I would have missed the whole thing even though I was rushing. I could have just said, no, I'm not gonna read that. So I just wanted to share that this morning. So, are we doing a meditation right now or after? I'm, I'm just so confused with how we proceed. But we do the meditation before the message. Okay, all right. So after service today, please join us. Follow Jesse. Okay, follow Jesse to the angel. We're going to do some planting today for the springtime. So join uh, Jesse, follow him out front and go with him and he'll tell you all of the detail. This week, we're gonna have meditation on Monday in the morning, 10 a.m. with Sherry and Wednesday, 6 p.m. with Reese. He does sing song and I heard this past week, someone gave him a great testimony about how wonderful that meditation is so I haven't been but someone gave him a great plug so you might want to check that out uh, prophetic insights with Reverend Jesse on Palm Sunday after the service all of these things you can please check your newsletter because we have all of this in the newsletter and on the website so always remember to go to these things if I'm going through it kind of fast. You can always find it there. On Friday, that's this coming Friday, the 25th, from 6 to 7.30 in Montgomery, join Elaine Thompson for, it's called Faith and Action Alabama. And he has a fly out there on the table where you can read it. And also, if you have any additional questions, you can speak to Elaine. And you can find it in your newsletter or on the website as well. Then we have more fun with Reverend Arturo and Soul Musica, his band, at Rojo on Sunday, February the 27th at 5 o'clock. I hear the band is very good. I may even March? try to go. Is that March? You said February. Oh, my goodness. March, yeah. what is March 27th? It's February, I apologize. March 27th. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I guess, I don't know, Back to the Future? I don't know. Okay, okay, March the 27th. And again, you can find that in your newsletter. See, I messed up, so you can always look in your newsletter or on the website, and it will always be right. Okay, and also, his band, uh, Cal, will you pronounce it for me? Kelly O.B. Pettis. Okay, we'll be playing April 1st at, <laughs> at eight at five o'clock. Oh, this year. <laughs> Touche. I love it. I love it. Okay, and we're going to have more music. Reverend Arturo, the Unity Musicians, and we have a special with Michael Sedetny. I hope I got that right. Got right. All right. Yes, yeah, see, so that takes over for everything else I messed up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, this is my friend Michael, and we've been playing together for several years, and he's also a member of Soul Musica. And uh, <clears throat> we're returning to Rojo after the long years of um, COVID, obviously. Um, so now it's a reduced budget because they don't have happy hours as they used to, like here. <laughs> Nobody does. Good morning, everyone. Of course, Michael didn't know what I was going to play, neither did Rick. <laughs> and that's part of the point of what I'm doing this uh, today. Uh, because as we uh, speak about music as a spiritual practice, you know, we start with nothing. I mean, 
accept our experience, the discipline, and how we hear things. And those take years, just like meditation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, meditation has existed uh, since the beginning mm -hmm. in every single culture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It probably started with observing nature, mm -hmm. just getting lost into whatever it may be there. Um, the stars. And so music and art have existed obviously for a long time, since the beginning. And let me come forward to you. I'm going to speak from that microphone. And I'm going to play something that I did last night. Okay. So, so these are ideas. I'm going to play them a little bit. So. Who has, um, who has a cell phone? Who doesn't have a cell phone? <laughs> right. Go well, for the blessed people who don't have cell phones. Good for you. But most of us, we do. So what do you do with your cell phones at night? <laughs> charge them up. <laughs> or do you charge your phone right before you go to work or to school or somewhere else? No. Not really yet? All the people charge it throughout the day consistently. Yeah. And maybe that is the, the best way. I think Apple says it's better not to let it go all the way. They used to say that before, but now it's like, just keep charging. And so imagine that, you know, uh, I wouldn't consider necessarily that a stressor, you know, stress, but I think if you're so constantly doing that, do we do that to our own selves, to our own body? How do we charge up our bodies? We don't even think about that. We think about the cell phone first, generally, right? If we've got a long day, right? And so uh, some of the ancient practices of uh, meditation, you know, for example, they exist uh, obviously in India, you know, but they also exist in the native tribes of Peru. And they also exist in um, the Middle East. The Jewish practices, you know, of like going into the desert and crying out to God. And the Psalms, for example, express every single human emotion. Distress, oh God, why have you abandoned me? Like, this is bad. I'm like as bad as dirt. And at some point, those Psalms of lament come into, but I will remember how good you are. How good you, how good you have been to me. And that lifts up the soul. Um, there is meditation where we can enter into our own selves and see our own selves for who we are. And with music, uh, as well as in regular meditation, we can quiet those worries. We can quiet the ego, I would say that, right? Um, and we can hear the, the voice of our soul and, and of God and the universe as we connect. And so music, same practice you know to become aware you know to start with discipline hearing one note you hear one note then you study every day it's just like learning how to do your pranayanas just learning how to do yoga I mean it's very hard to do yoga unless you were born in India right we'll never get to certain points so in that sense we create our own reality of health and what is good to us um, in all ways, you know, we look forward to enter into an enlightened sense of being, right? Where we can uh, transcend um, the stressful mind, you know, the negative call of the senses, because some of the senses are pretty good, actually, yeah. but not all the time. Um, so with music, uh, we're going to do that. Now we hear about um, mantras, and I know you all have studied about this, right? And uh, when I hear Ram Das meditations, when he talks about mantra, it's not a specific word, and there is a specific words that you know this has this a convolution of syllables and energy that can speak to your own chakras and your own centers. That's wonderful if you have that, you can use that. But as I hear, you know, meditation can be something very simple. 
um, a word. You know, I am love. I am love. And that is no different from the early Christian practices of the first few centuries. But we'll just grab a few words of devotion. Shakti, devotion. A few simple words. And they will go for one, two, three hours. How is this different than any place in the world? Really, it's not. And music, of course, is an integral part of that. As well as dance, as well as all the arts, ever since the beginning of uh, humanity, you know, since the first person, I don't know how they did it in the cave, put his hands or her hands and just went to the wall of the cave and said, oh my goodness. And you say, here I am, here I am. And then you see the stories told. So when the tribes fought with one another, when they made peace, what did they do? They gathered together and danced. Because there were no musical instruments then, really, for a while. But now we have them. And so the higher practice of meditation for a musician is really to play, as we did. What you heard earlier, you may call it in different ways. Yes, of course, we improvise. But we enter into this state where things flow. We don't have to even ask what we're doing. Uh, it's a little bit different when we have to do somebody else's music and we're going to play it perfectly this way or not. Uh, in which case, that's when you better have the discipline to have learned and studied. But it's not much like uh, much different than this meditation to me. Prayer is meditation. Yes. Singing is meditation. Yes. So I meditate throughout the whole day. I will not say, oh, I'm going to go and meditate and do this and do that. That's perfect at certain times, I guess, but I am not made that way. I am truly who I am, so are you. So we all develop our own sense of what's good for us. After all, we are Westerners. We were born in the West, most of us, right? So I, think I will never be able to do yoga properly. <laughs> so modified. Yoga. Yes. All right, so we're going to play a little bit more. And during the period of time, now I will ask you if you want to close your eyes, that's fine. Uh, I remember, you know, this is prayer, this is meditation, you can use your mantra, um, you can sing a melody. Uh, that's what the Jewish people did, sing melodies. Not much different from what other mystics do anywhere around the world. So let's enter into that state and I'm going to go up and I'm going to be playing a little more music with my friends here. And I'm going to be adding some instruments of the world. You hear some samples of real Tibetan chimes that I played yesterday. Those are sort of like real. They went to the temple and recorded, not the whole thing, note by note, note by note, in different levels of dynamics. Um, that's what you hear is a prepared piano. It's a piano that has felt and metals. And of course, I was playing it. And we're going to hear percussion from around the world. Um, so, okay, you can. Jesus pray with his eyes open, that's fine, you know. But you can close your eyes if that helps you. I think it does. All right.
Good morning, good morning, everybody. Let's put our hands together one more time for the musician. Oh my God, that was beautiful, and the meditation was lovely. Um, meditation, according to Reverend Arturo, I mean, it's there's a, a scripture in the Old Testament that says that man should pray and not faint. And when you look at prayer, meditation, that conversation, singing, we do it all the time. Sitting with friends, sitting with loved ones, our favorite song. Some of y'all got a song going on in your head right now that you've been trying to turn off for two weeks. And this is this weird jingle. We're always talking and communicating. But our ancestors wanted us to direct our communication towards God, towards higher things. Because although we can't turn it off, if we can just redirect it, we get energized, according to the meditator. We recharge ourselves. And so that, that soul music, uh, universal sound experience was great. It was immersive. Y'all felt that? Mm -hmm. The energy from it? It was like I traveled somewhere. It's beautiful. Uh, good morning, everybody that's watching online. We're grateful for our live streamers. I love streamers. You two are a part of Unity of Birmingham. And in the words of our ancestors, I was glad, and we're all glad, when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Put your hands together one time for our live love streamers. We are grateful for you. And our ancestors were so wise. Repeat this mantra with me. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord isn't just the physical building. It's actually the physical body. And it's not just the physical body, but it's also the house of the stars, because every star system is gathered together in a house. Um, a couple of days ago, we had our first full moon heralding the spring. The full moon was in Virgo. Did everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. Jesus was born where? In Bethlehem. Everybody say Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Bethlehem is the house of bread. Astrologically, the house of bread is the house of Virgo. Jesus was born of a virgin. The virgin is the house of Virgo, that Christ consciousness manifesting itself in the house of Virgo. You want to go a little deeper? Yeah. Wow. The house of Virgo is superimposed on the body and the gut, the house of bread. So during this time, be mindful of your gut health, your, your home, your relationships, your life, your connections, your connections with your physical body. Um, and it's springtime. Everybody say spring. Spring. We're cleaning up. We're cleaning up. We're making, uh, we're renewing ourselves. We're going through a renaissance. We're vacuuming the floors. We're rearranging the house. We're throwing away old things. And we're arguing with people in our lives that don't want to <laughs> let the things go that we're trying to throw away. <laughs> and then some of y'all throw them away. We ain't going to talk about that. That's another service. <laughs> but... That whole process. Isn't it funny how the earth, everything in it lines up? I mean, from the astrological houses, as above, so below. Come on, metaphysicians, metaphysicians y'all know it. As above, so below. So everything lines up, whether we're talking about in the stars. And the beautiful thing is, we can say this in 2022, there was a time where we couldn't talk this deep behind a podium. We couldn't talk about the astrological houses. We couldn't talk about how the houses were superimposed on the body. We couldn't talk about Jesus being born of a virgin, virgin being the house of Virgo. That right there would get you shot, beat up, your microphone cut, and you wouldn't come back no more to the church, let alone to the city. <laughs> so there is a liberation that's happened. Um, our ancestor told us in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So there was an interfaith consciousness even in our ancestors' minds who didn't quite maybe understood, per se. Then again, we don't know what they understood. Maybe they didn't understand all of the religions and all of the faiths and all the practices all over the world. But they left us a message. They told us that there is a presence and a power that's both in us, with us, as us, that transcends culture. It transcends creed. In fact, it transcends and it includes so what it does when we depict the nature of God or spirit, it's an evolving circle because it's moving to escape the mundane, but then it comes back down and scoops it up. In other words, the word became what? Flesh. But the other part of that journey is for the flesh to become word. So we go from word becoming flesh and then flesh becoming word. That's our power. That's our privilege. That's the responsibility of us. 
our metaphys metaphysical response. I can't get that word right today. Ugh. Metaphysical. That's our metaphysical responsibility. And that's why we come together every Sunday. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. We come together. Forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. Y'all remember that sacred text, that scripture? Because there's something that happens when we come together. Jesus sent out his disciples. Why? Two by two. He sent them out two by two because he wanted to make sure that everybody had a buddy. Because you can do this thing by yourself. Sure. But who wants to be the Long Ranger? Even the Long Ranger had a sidekick. Who was his sidekick? Don't go. You see what I'm saying? We don't even have the, the colloquialism right. We say, who wants to be the Long Ranger? But he had an assistant. Everybody needs somebody. And when we link up, there is something in me that resonates in you, bacteria. Who's the scientist in the room? <laughs> there is something in me that connects with the thing that's in you. Look at how wonderful spirit is. Spirit even operates in randomness. Randomly, people from all over the state of Georgia, from various places and spaces, have assembled themselves together in one place. That's a miracle. Go ahead and put your hands together for that. What do you think about that? And mystically, you only meet here if you've met over there. You only meet here if you've met over there. Where's over there? Over there is in consciousness. You can't meet. That's the law of metaphysics. You can't meet over here. So even though I'm meeting you now and seeing some of you guys for the first time, we've always known each other. You know how I know that? There's a connection between me and you. When I see dear mama over there, she's always been my mother. I've always been her son. When I see my sister over there, she's always been my sister. I've always been her brother. We've had a connection in many lifetimes. You ever felt that about people? You meet them and it's like you just click. What is that? It's bacteria. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I had a conversation with a scientist the other day and they were like, you know, that feeling that you get, the tingling all over your body when you hug somebody and when you kiss, that's your evolutionary impulse exchanging bacteria just to see if you guys can procreate together. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists are hilarious, but they're true. There is something in me that connects with you in such a way, at such a fast pace, that I can't say it was created in this lifetime. It had to be multiple lifetimes. So today we're talking about envisioning the future. Everybody say envisioning the future. Envisioning the future. In order to envision the future, you have to have your feet firmly planted in the present. Because the future can be bumpy. It can be scary. But when you recognize everything that's going on around you, and when you see it all working together for your highest good. If I could walk around a little bit without losing our love streamers. See, that's the thing, right? Recognizing that it's all, come on in, my brother. I was waiting on you. Come on. <laughs> I got something for you two guys. It, it, it's something positive. I want to speak a word in your life before the service is over. Um, but when we can acknowledge that it's all work, where's your brother? Uh, I think he's at work. Uh, okay, tell him I asked about <laughs> When we can acknowledge, I love those guys, man. I remember being that age. And that's another thing. When you see yourself, acknowledge it. When you see yourself, acknowledge it. it that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But And what you acknowledge in others will be acknowledged in yourself. What you do for others will be done. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Love thyself as thy neighbor. Well, who's closer to you than anything or anyone else? Yourself. So when I'm loving him, I'm loving myself. And when I'm loving myself, I'm sending the energy to him. But when we see it all working together for our good, that's the hardest thing to do. Am I right? When things happen, right? And they confuse you, and they're beyond your understanding. You ever had that experience? What in the world is going on? Well, maybe it's just me. You run up against circumstances, and you're like, my God, what in the world is this? How can God fix this? How can spirit fix this? I'll tell you a quick story. Um, last week, we talked about the story of Moses' first encounter with God. And just to kind of drop those nuggets on you. Uh, when Moses encountered God at the burning bush, yod He vav He, or Yahweh, that was the manifestation or the archetype that presented itself to Moses. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there was a flame in the burning bush that appeared to Moses in the midst of yod He vav He. 
That flame in Hebrew is the Hebrew letter Shin. Yod He Vav He or Yod He Shin Vav He transforms Yahweh into Yahashua. Yahashua in English is Joshua. Moses' assistant was Joshua. So Moses looked into the flame and saw the future, and he didn't see himself. He saw his replacement. And then some scholars also say that Moses looked 2,000 years into the future and saw the evolution of the Christ consciousness. It's possible for him to see both, but in order for him to see anything, spirit had to get his attention. When you back up a couple of scriptures, you find that Moses was attending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. And scripture in sacred text says that Moses saw something in a distance. He saw a bush that was on fire that wasn't consumed. That word consumed in Hebrew is the same word associated with eat. In the, uh, uh, the Garden of Eden story, all the trees in the garden are good for food. They're good enough to be eaten. And when you look at the trees in the Garden of Eden, the trees metaphorically and metaphysically are truths. There are truths in this world that transcend our current state of consciousness that are good for food. But when we don't understand those truths, when the truths look more like inedible trees, we miss out on them. What does that mean? When's the last time you missed out on good advice? Like, dang it, so-and-so <laughs> told me to do this and I missed it. When's the last time you missed out on a great opportunity? Dang it, something told me to tip, but I was just, yeah, I was, I, I didn't, it didn't look right, it didn't look right, it didn't look right, it didn't look right. So we come together and we do this spiritual work so we can tune and fine tune the voice of God. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. Your prophet, your inner voice, your inner intuitive, your inner teacher, when you fine tune that voice, you meant you that can't talk today. You don't miss out on those opportunities that life is bringing your way. So all the trees in the garden were good for fruit and all the truths in the garden of the world are good for food. But it's up to us as individuals to be able to see the face of God in the world. That's the hardest thing to do about envisioning the future. Because when we look sometimes at the present, let alone the future, it looks chaotic. Can I get a yes, yes? Yes. What in the world is going on right now? Anybody ever said that? What in the world is going on in my life? Let me give you another one. What is the matter with her? What in the world is going on with him? Who got children? <laughs> you say something else about them kids. That's why they call them kids. I thought it took two people to make them. Nah, it ain't my kid or her kid. It's them kids. <laughs> them had two kids. But all the trees. <laughs> Y'all catch that tomorrow. It's okay to laugh, people. Come on and laugh. Don't hold it in. Let it out. Laugh with your belly. <laughs> but all the trees in the garden of the world are good for food. So the word consumed, fire, burning the bush, is the same word used for con consummation, meaning to eat, um, in the Garden of Eden story. And the Bible says that Moses turned, and then he heard the voice. So the bush is on fire. He sees it in a distance. He's tending the flock of his father, Jethro, so he's in his regular life stuff. And then he turns, and then the voice speaks to him. You know, the interesting thing about that text is that while tending the flock of Jethro, there is nothing scripturally that says that God was speaking to him while he was doing his regular day-to-day -day stuff. He had to see something miraculous. Now, if I can wrestle with the scripture just a little bit without boring you guys, I kind of have a problem with that. See, when we only see God or deity or spirit in the miraculous, we miss out on God in the ordinary. God speaks to us in the ordinary stuff of our day-to-day -day lives, sometimes louder than God speaks to us in the miraculous. I mean, if you follow me home, my life is pretty standard. I have a very boring life. And I get more enjoyment from the boredom, now that I'm getting older, than I get from the excitement. In my 20s, I wanted cities and tall buildings, and I wanted to do like my grandmother and jump from roof to roof and all that other stuff. <laughs> but now that I'm older, I love the quiet. I can't stand loud noise and screaming and hollering and yelling. So God or spirit speaks to us in the mundane just as much as it speaks to us in the miraculous. And here's the beautiful thing about future vision and being a visionary. The future can be bright with ordinary stuff. The future can be bright with possibility of normalcy because I'm not sure about you, but I could use a little normalcy in my life. I could use a future 
of normalcy. And not just normalcy, but tradition. Can I go ahead and give a unit of Birmingham Club? How old is this community as an institution? A hundred plus years old. That takes a lot. That takes a lot. Various chapters and various manifestations and experiences, but a hundred years old, am I right, mama, give or take? A uh, hundred years old as an institution, as a community. So that normalcy, that consistency is one of the things that we're constantly working on, and this is why we come together. So when we're talking about envisioning the future, collectively we have to envision a future that's consistent, a future that's normal, a future that will be around so that when our children envision a future, they have something to stand on. Which is why in that same text, one of the first things that Spirit tells Moses to do is take your shoes off because the place where you stand is holy ground. Here's the beautiful thing about Spirit when Spirit speaks to you. You don't need to do anything crazy. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to travel to any place. Right where you stand is holy ground. And here's some insight to that. Where he stood was holy ground, which is an indicator that everything that was needed for him to go to the next step was already in him. Take your shoes off, because if you keep your shoes on, you might run. So spirit wants you to take your shoes off. That's happened to some of us. Some of us get planets. Like, you ever felt like that? Oh, I'm grounded. Wow, I can't go nowhere today. I just, it, 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 the spirit got something to say to you. I just, uh, I cranked the car up and the car sounded funny. You ain't supposed to go nowhere. I put gas in the car, but you know, gas is kind of hot. Well, sit still. COVID grounded all of us. Right. It, 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 I heard something in the what you say. <laughs> COVID grounded all of us, and it made us sit down. But while you're sitting down, everyone that's listening to this, and for those that are listening online, I want you guys to know that even though you might be sitting down in a spot, everything that you need in order to move to the next place, in order to take the next step, in order to move into your next phase of life is already in you. And sometimes it takes us sitting down to recognize that. So envisioning the future, if I can add this point, sometimes we feel that that future is too great for what we have right now. It's supposed to be like that because it's the future. It's the not happened yet. But the wonderful thing about spirit, metaphysically, is that every moment is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What time is it? It's now. Ten minutes from here, we will be at now. Ten minutes in the past, we will be at now. So when I'm talking present, past, future, I'm only speaking subjectively. These are all now states. So when you look at your present circumstances and you're envisioning the future, you're trying to raise money, you're trying to do things, you're trying to build a business. Can I talk to you? You're trying to launch something. You're trying to restore a relationship. And it looks like what you have right now in your pocket isn't enough to get you what it is you are trying to do over there. It's because you're not looking at it through the eyes of now faith. Because if I look at myself the way God sees me, Everything that is needed for where I need to go is already in me. Repeat this mantra with me. Everything we need is in the house. Everything we need is in the house. Say it one more time. Everything we need is in the house. Say it like you believe. Everything we need is in the house. Say it with your chest. <laughs> because if we're talking about envisioning the future, Moses saw his replacement. So if I can wrestle with this text, I'm going to challenge you that while you are envisioning the future, don't do like Moses. I want you to see yourself in that future, because if I can see myself in it, I know it'll be there. That's why Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. It's a wonderful mystical text. You know what that means? Before Abraham was, I am. There's a part of me that's already there. My physical body just has to catch up to it. There's a consciousness that's already there, which is why Reverend Ike would say, get full of the feeling. Get full of the feeling. While others are searching for fulfillment, Reverend Ike would say, get fulfillment because feeling makes it so. Say this with me. Feeling, feeling makes, makes it, it so. so. Say it one more time. Feeling, feeling makes, makes it, it so. so. I don't know. I don't know them, but I just got a good feeling about them. You sure? Yeah, I got a good feeling about them. I don't know them, but I'm going to give them a chance. And that's all spirit asks of you, to give life a chance, right? There's a wonderful mantra in the New Testament. I believe it goes something along the lines of, uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. 
in my father's house are many mansions. That belief is self-belief. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Yourself, your own inner power. When you marry the head and the heart, there are many mansions within you. There are many levels within you. There are things that you are capable of that you haven't even seen yet. You're 60, 70, 50 years old. You haven't even touched the iceberg of living yet. For some of you, you guys are about to start a new career today. For some of you that are listening, you're about to start a new relationship today. For some of you that are in relationships, you're about to renew your vows today. And for some of you that are single, you're about to renew your commitment to yourself today. Everybody say envisioning the future. Envisioning the future. Because you have to see it in here and then see yourself in it out there. And then the consciousness will connect with the physical body. The reason why we've envisioned things and they didn't work out because we didn't have the consciousness of it. We were motivated by fear. Now being motivated by fear has nothing to do with practicality. The first thing that Spirit told Moses to do was take your shoes off for where you stand is holy ground. You plant your feet in practicality and pragmatism, according to William James. You get practical, and then you do the visioning work, and you make sure you have the consciousness of faith and not the consciousness of fear. Because if you start off with fear and confuse it with practicality, then your vision will be a mixture of fear-based tactics wrapped in practicality. That'll look like chaos. I thought you said this was going to happen. But did you believe it when we initially said it? Because if you believe it, you put your whole self in it. The consciousness and the physical body connects. You want to know if a person doesn't believe something? They check out. You can tell. You can tell. It's like, oh, you ain't even here. You don't believe it. Because your body isn't there. See, when you believe and when you buy into something, Miss Peggy said this a while back, I listen with all of my senses. All of my senses. See, all of your senses are there because you buy into it, right? So I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service, according to sacred text. So when we buy into the vision of the future, our physical bodies buy into it. Y'all still with me? You get fully there. You get fully present. You stop Yawning, you stop zoning out, you stop not paying attention, and then you start looking for opportunity. Right? Moses missed out on the voice of God while just doing his regular day to day stuff. It took a burning bush in order for him to see it. The way I grew up, by the time a burning bush presents itself, you've missed like six, seven months of what life has been trying to tell you. Now you got to catch up. It took something huge. But just to go deeper about that burning bush, you want to know what's significant about that burning bush? That bush, according to the bush and the shrubbery that grew in that region, I'm almost done, was a thorny blackberry style bush. It was the kind of bush that was so thorny, rabbis in the Talmud said was the thorniest of the thorniest, um, that animals would pass by it and not touch that one because it was too hard, hard of a work to get to the fruit. But the flame of God, the power of God, the spirit of God descended onto that thorny bush. For the things in your life that you are most confused about, sometimes those are the places where God is doing the most work. And the wonderful thing about spirit is it doesn't matter where you are, what you have, what you're going through. It's an integrationist. So it continues to work with you. Oh, I have all this stuff. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't have resources like everyone. But spirit can still use you if you allow it to. I don't have everything I need in order to get this off the ground. But if you surrender what you have, then you will find that need has already been Provided. So the Spirit of God descended into the thorniest of the thorn bushes and called out to Moses. So let me ask you, where's the chaos in your life? Ooh, that's where life is speaking to you the most. Where's the trouble? Trouble in my way, trouble. Where's the trouble? Where's the trouble in your life? Right? That's where life is speaking to you the most. Where's the tough spot? Where's the thing that you are running away from? I'm going to challenge you. Run towards it. Because when Moses turned toward the hard thing, he heard the voice of God. 
Not in the comfortable thing. Ooh, that's a lot of money. I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know if I can sling that one play. It was, uh, I hate you back there. <laughs> but you got it. You have to see yourself there. Feet on the ground, because you can handle the vision. And for some of you, you might not need to put your feet on the ground. You might need to sit down for this one. Because this next manifestation that life is getting ready to do in you, with you, as you, it's going to blow your mind. But you have to see it. You have to feel it. And when you do that, life will make it so. How? Not through magic, but through the magic of ordinary mundane things. Call us with our minds, our bodies, our bloods, our brain, our sweat, our tears. This is how we envision the future. And this is how we build it and make it happen. Thank you for listening. Namaste. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's about all I can say. Yes, um, yes, another hand. That is just excellent. I have to go back and listen to that again. But that was really, really beautiful. Thank you so much. So now let's go into our pockets, pocketbooks, wallets, whatever. And Give back to unity as God has blessed us. Would like everyone to hold their offering in their hand and repeat with me our offertory blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. I give in love. And I trust God, and so it is. And in the back, there are baskets on either side, and as you leave, you can, Peggy is being the spanner back there, pointing to them. <laughs> you can please deposit your offering in either one of those baskets. And now we are, you know, I just wanna say earlier, when I was talking about Reese and the Wednesday night um, meditation, I just wanted to say, I, it was just on my heart that Sh Sherry does Monday at 10 a.m. So I just happened to hear someone talking about Reese and that's not to take anything away from Sherry. I haven't been to either one of them. So I just wanted to make that little clarification. I'm sure she is wonderful as well. And now, we will sing the peace song. Everyone stand, stand. please. protects us. I am 
power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Have a great rest of the day, and don't forget to put your offering in the basket. And also, also real quick, um, we're having a special prayer service outside. Um, if you got a letter in the mail, uh, they included seeds. If you didn't bring those seeds, we're planting wildfires in the wildfires, wildflowers in order to herald the spring. Please join us immediately after service um, over by the angel, and then right afterwards, there'll be appetizers and. Up on the. We're gonna we're gonna go up there.